Kimberly Brooks, welcome inside the Crazy Ant Farm. How are you tonight? I'm fantastic. Thanks for having me inside of the Crazy Ant Farm. <laughs> oh my goodness, we are so <laughs> excited. Not only are we just excited to talk to you because of all the amazing stuff that you do, and we're just super pumped about that, we know the listeners are, but you're also, I don't know if you're aware, but you are also the first guest of 2022 and oh, season wow. five of our show. We are kicking oh, off the fifth year. So. It all converges. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you're a first of all over the place for I'm, us. That makes me feel so good. I love it. Thanks for having me and and letting me be a part of your fifth the beginning of your fifth uh anniversary yeah uh, of course season. of course <laughs> you're like a guest probably 150 130 around that area yeah so. yeah i think it's yeah we're definitely 150 or so so yeah but it's I amazing feel like number one you know you are, are number you one are. that's right <laughs> <laughs> so what we like to do at the very beginning of mm -hmm. our interviews is have our guests introduce themselves to the audience a little bit let us know how you got started was this something you always wanted to do or did you just kind of follow into it doing our little research on you we saw that you got started at a very young age yeah i did um and i'm lucky because <clears throat> excuse me i have teenagers now and they're they don't no 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 no, no way. way and they don't know what they want to do it's yeah. crazy so it's like they're trying to you know different things they're in college and taking different classes <laughs> and trying to figure it out and i was like I guess I just took for granted that I've always known. I have always just made voices. I've always talked to myself. I've played with my Barbie dolls. <laughs> right. Way too in depth, you know, way too much like detail. My friends were like, oh my God, she's weird. Like, you know, and I just, I loved expressing myself vocally that way. And, and then, you know, and I've always done theater. You know, I basically grew up in here in LA mm -hmm. and, um, I, Went to a school that had a really great theater arts program, so I was in all the plays, musicals, but um, I always wanted to be an announcer, which oh, is weird. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which is weird. Not animation, not like all that. I was like, I want to be like, tonight on ABC. <laughs> you know, like, I wanted to be that, I wanted to be Don LaFontaine, basically. There you go. All just, right. Yeah. It was really, really, um, really just something that I wanted and um and I didn't know why I didn't even know that it was called voiceover mm -hmm. I right. just was like those voices you know and I would just kind of pretend to do that a lot <laughs> <laughs> well a couple of things out of all that one I'm flabbergasted I'm like no way she's old enough to have teenage kids and then Aww. teenage kids in college I'm thinking oh yeah 13 okay sure whatever I still don't believe it but no <laughs> wow so wow um Thank <laughs> second you. of all right like when you grow up in LA is I feel like it's always kind of like one or two things right you know for sure that's what you want to do the entertainment industry or you run like hell to get out of there because yeah. it's yeah. not <laughs> anything of what you want to do, do. Yeah, yeah exactly so, so yeah, my kids, they don't want anything to do with it. So, yeah. Um, well, there you go, right? But, yeah, I was, but I was kind of weirdly shy. So when I was a kid, like, I tried to get an agent and stuff because my dad was a principal at a school with, like, a lot of kid actors and, mm. and agents, and it was weird. So, like, he kind of, like, got me an interview, and I didn't do well because I was, like, I was an, I didn't interview well because I was kind of yeah. nervous and shy. Right. And, but when I'm on stage doing my thing, I wasn't. But right. I didn't really know that yet, you know. Just, just I didn't really um, hone in on that. But um, so yeah, I growing up in LA, you do have an advantage. You definitely oh, yeah. have an oh, advantage yeah. because you know everything's right here. That's and, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And because I talk to a lot of people that want to get into voiceover, mm -hmm. and they live, you know, all over the country. Because mm -hmm. I've been to a lot of conventions and. Um, but now you've got the internet, so that's right. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, that at least is something that can you know bridge that gap that w otherwise would not have been you know right. the case. You had had to be here. So um, and and the business has changed a lot. I've been doing this for like more than twenty five years, mm -hmm. probably. So. Um, it's changed a lot. It's very digital now. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. You can you can literally, like you said, be anywhere, record your audio file, and send it to whoever needs yeah. it. And like, yeah, yeah, it's just crazy. And now the phones are so great, you can even like do your audition on a phone That's if right. like if you're in a pinch, you know. So it's really interesting. <laughs> That's but, um, really yeah. cool. I love that though. I love that. I mean, just to have all of this knowledge about the entertainment industry. And when you started doing your vo voiceover work, did you have to like go into a studio and do it? Opposed to Definitely. now, like doing it at home? 
you did everything. You did nothing at home. Yeah. Like, unless you were Don LaFontaine. Yeah. <laughs> who had a studio at his house. That's right. And, but before he had that studio, he was like chauffeured in a limousine. Yeah. To all of the different studios. Like that's, that's like, that was my vision for myself. I, mean, <laughs> I love it. I don't, I don't have a chauffeur, but I do get to go to a lot of different studios. <laughs> <laughs> was the transition from like theater to voice acting difficult for you? No. Because um, I, I, I guess when you're perfect. not on camera, you can still act big, right? Like, right. <laughs> and you can act big in the booth. I'm very that's expressive right. in the booth. I'm like, yeah, I'm all over the place. I'm like knocking stuff off my stands all the time. But, um, yeah, no, you can, um, it was a really great, easy transition, I think. I think I encourage theater people to try voiceover because um, it, you have to come up with characters. And sometimes people think voiceover is just about the voice, mm -hmm. but it's really about the acting for right. animation. Yeah. And um, for me, and then it, you, it come, the character comes from like having done so much, you know, acting mm -hmm. in theater and, you know, scenes and all that kind of stuff. So I would definitely start there if, if people want to do animation. It's not just about the voice. Obviously, the voice, you got to be able to, you know, do right. different characters and whatnot, but start with the acting. So um, that theater background definitely helps for sure. Oh, yeah. Animation and video games and all that stuff. Exactly. Definitely. Yeah. I also have a little bit of a theater background. I performed when I was in high school, and I will say that it just got me out of my comfort zone. It made me more confident mm -hmm. to be able yes. to talk in front of people. Even when going into audition, we went mm -hmm. in on a stage, and the um, – the directors, the musical and acting director were in the audience, so you couldn't see them. All you saw was the bright lights, but you had to be prepared to, <laughs> you had to do yeah. your monologue. And I mean, something about that just elevated my confidence like crazy. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like theater is a great way for everyone to break into acting yeah. because if someone wants to be an actor and then they attempt to go out to Los Angeles and they just jump straight into the room, I feel like if they don't already have that natural born confidence, yeah. then it confidence might, is yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. It yeah. might like derail them a little bit because you wouldn't. Yeah, you could get discouraged. Exactly. You know? Because we talk about it all the time. It's about 90% auditioning and 10% actually working. Yeah. So yeah. I mean. It's all about that. It's a numbers game. Exactly. It's literally an industry of built of on rejection. So if you're <laughs> yeah, not exactly. confident, you're in trouble. <laughs> like, I you am know. rejected every day. Yeah, that exactly. Sucks. And you know, another thing I really like like that you brought up though you because you said you know uh the voiceover and how important the acting is right i yes. i think a lot of people tend to forget especially the millennials and anybody beyond new Jet, right back in the day it was all voiceover radio serials were where the acting was <laughs> yes. they every week there was a show or a movie on the radio yeah. and you couldn't see you could only hear and it was it's so true. crucial for the acting to come through back in the day with the fireside chats and the, around the you know the family getting around that's how it was so that's i'm so exactly glad that it. you brought it up because i don't think people really realize how much acting actually is involved in voiceover work oh yeah i mean i'm <clears throat> like it, you know, when you get a number of auditions mm -hmm. and you have to switch gears and mm -hmm. you got to have those acting chops to like, just to be able to put yourself in the scene. Right. And yeah, so I, I, for, for sure you need to, I think everyone should take an acting class, but it's, if you want to be an animation voiceover actor, you got to take an acting class. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do that. You just have to, it's just a part of it. And then the voices, that's just something that, you know. It comes. You know, when I was in high school, we had career day, mm -hmm. and there was um, a psychic in one of the rooms, and every, it was, like, a really popular room, and I yeah. went in that room, and I got picked to go up, and she did, like, a reading on me, and she was like, you are going to be very successful, and you are going to make... She told me, and this was when I was in high school, you're going to make a living with your voice. Mm. But I didn't know what voiceover was. And right, I was right. in musical theater, so I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be in a band. <laughs> I'm going to be a rock star or something. And so I don't know what I thought, because I love, I do love singing. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, so, I, we're speaking of confidence, mm -hmm. I feel like I kind of... Like, I took all that acting stuff, but I had this kind of confidence when I went into voiceover, and it's all about confidence. Mm, yes. Mm -hmm. um, because there's so much competition, mm -hmm. and confidence is like you just, you you selling yourself. Like, if you believe yourself to mm -hmm. be 
the thing, then other people will believe whatever it That's is that right. you are trying to um, to be or what you are, what you really are. Right. So, um, yeah, having that confidence and the background in theater, it was just a really natural evolution. Yeah, for, for sure. And it's kind of interesting, too, because before there was social media, before everyone was a brand, before they were selling everything, actors yeah. were a brand before mm-hmm. any of that was put out publicly. Like, they had to present themselves, mm-hmm. basically present paperwork about themselves, like right. a headshot, resume, yeah. all that here's, good stuff. Here's me. <laughs> exactly, yeah. on a piece yeah, of paper. Totally. So, I mean, it's totally. very interesting to see, like, the transition and how, like, the world and the entertainment industry have never navigated through this electronic time and digital age like you said to keep moving forward definitely and think about voice actors back in the day before people really could connect with voice actors because this like this kind of thing like an interest in what i do wasn't wasn't really the thing like when i started because it's so it's considered like behind the scenes it's not like on camera Uh, acting yeah where you and now it's like everyone wants to do voiceover and it's so much fun and and it is acting even though i had one person this one guy once <laughs> say oh what do you do for a living and i said i go i'm a voiceover actor and he goes what's that and i go well you know you mostly you just hear me right. and you don't see me and he's like oh so you're like you're like a half an actor you're like oh, half oh, acting. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> i just thought that was so funny cuz right. like, oh, and you I have guess. half a brain right you're like, half, like oh. yeah exactly <laughs> Like half witted, right? No. <laughs> so that's interesting, though, because you know Logan brings up headshots, and back in the day, it was actual photographs and all this. Oh yeah. So talk about that process, like voice actors, like you said, you're not on camera. Nobody could care less what you look like. So yeah. what is a resume or demo reel or headshot for a voice actor? Do you have to like even back in the day? Did you have to submit voice work or like how did that work? What's the audition yeah, process you just, like? You just always it was the demo reel and. Mm-hmm. When I started, it was on these little tapes, yeah, kind of dat dat tapes. Yeah, and you would go, and they would like you'd hire someone to mix your to to you know to make yourself a reel. And when you first start out, you kind of have to like make stuff up. Mm, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You have to just it's more like showing what you can do, right? And then you get to a point where you actually have work and things that you can put on your reel, and then. Then you get to a point like me where you don't haven't redone your reel in like I don't know eight or nine years because <laughs> they call you now you don't yeah, have to be like yeah <laughs> kind of and also you're busy but you're also kind of lazy right so, so, <laughs> it's all of those things so yeah in fact I was just talking to my son about um, go I'm like you know they have this thing called the internet <laughs> and you can go and you can find like some of my performances mm. and I'm ready to put together a new reel mm-hmm. I really need help with it and because I'm just I'm really busy right right and um and there's so much good stuff out there that I, that I haven't like gathered up and put and I'd like to see it myself so I'm in the process of trying to do that because I think people still when they want to hire you they still go to your eight they would go to my agent's website, mm-hmm, and my right. agent has all of the actors' demo reels. And oh, people, that's cool. I haven't been in there. Yeah. I think that's – because sometimes I'll get a job, and I don't know how I'll get it. And my agent says, oh, they went on – they listened to – you know, I'll book something, and they'll be like, oh, they went and listened to your, you know, promo reel. Right. Right. Which is like, oh, so old. <laughs> um, I have so much cool stuff I could be putting on there. Yeah. Um and I mean, so, speaking of the cool stuff that you've done in the past, we just have to name a few. I mean, I have a long list oh, uh, yeah, that's I mean, just huge. like crazy. But <laughs> I mean, at the top of the list, of course, uh, Voltron, Legendary Defenders, Scooby-Doo, you were a hex girl. That's so badass in itself. Oh right my God, there. that's why my daughter, I, I, I have love- to tell you, obsessed with the hex girls and that Scooby-Doo happened, and just wore me down with the song over <laughs> and over and over. So I want to thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I love being a hex girl with Jane and um, oh, with yeah. Jennifer. It's so much fun. <laughs> yeah, we've we've done some stuff kind of recently, so they're, we're still around. We're still uh, oh, around. don't oh wait, yeah, don't so don't. Still, okay, we can't let Emily still hear this. Right? <laughs> yeah, so. She's just, she's running out right now. The hex girls are still around. What? <laughs> <laughs> right, that is just yeah. So we're still funny. around. We're still around. I love still it thinking. though. I love yeah, it. Yeah, that's yeah. So those are some really those are some fun memories because one of the first times I got to work on Scooby Doo was with 
all the, like all the original cast. Yeah. yeah. Frank Frank Welker still does it, mm-hmm. you know, but this was when all of Mary Kay Bergman and Good um, last name, by the way. No. Yeah. <laughs> That's his last name. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. And um, you know, Casey Kasem. And, oh yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, Frank Welker and just it was so much fun to get to work on that project to work on that and you know continue to work on Scooby Doo. Warner Brothers is awesome because I I get to work on a lot of different shows like a bunch um, of DC stuff which yeah. I just <laughs> fandom yeah. out of. I mean Batman Arkham Asylum, Batman Arkham City, like just yeah. I mean your Bumblebee like like I mean just so many different things. You know Bumblebee. I was huge because Titans like that was my first thing. You know that's where yeah. I first was introduced to her um, mm-hmm. in comic books. And then I was like, right. oh wait a minute, they're actually going to do this. And I was yeah. like, so an <laughs> Oracle. I mean just so many cool things so yeah warner brothers Thanks. like kicking yeah thank you warner brothers <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's right that was like some of my my first jobs were at warner brothers i worked at um i worked on deck well dexter's lab it was mm-hmm. um and uh what was some of the other shows static shock oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, powerpuff really, girls yeah. like yeah. that's where i was really you know starting out young and i had you know that was like some of my first jobs, and it was How just, so cool. I loved Wild it. Thornberries, like just so many different things. Rugrats, yeah. so yeah, yeah. Nickelodeon jump, like yeah, Nickelodeon, I just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nickelodeon has also been very, very good to me. Oh they're yeah, like there's, they're like. I'm working on several Nickelodeon shows right now. Baby Shark. Have you guys seen Baby oh, Shark? Oh, my oh. goodness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who hasn't at this point, right? <laughs> it's so so cute. It's so cute. Yeah, I'm. I'm I have a uh, fun little role and we get to sing. See? 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 Yeah, there you go. Full circle. It's so great, though. It's so great. We actually, um, because like we told you before we started recording, that we are a film and television production company. And so we put on multiple different hats and juggle different things. So we have different people that come on board and help us out. And our social media manager is the one who actually suggested us to reach out to you and try to get you on the show, Delana. Uh So we wanted to... uh, Ask her to ask you a question or write up something. So I'm going to read okay. uh, what her question is. And she said, I'd like to know how your experience was like working on Bioware as a voice actress in a Mass Effect franchise. Mm. Uh, she loved Mass Effect and had ton- it had tons of female representation oh, in the yeah. kind of game that usually lets men take the lead as the strong ones and portray yeah. women as just people to come home to. And uh, she just absolutely loved it. And she said, you're an inspiration. So because she, oh, well. she, she's trying to be a, a voice actor, she's breaking into it as well. Oh, nice. Well, thank you so much for that. Good luck with your pursuit because it is, it's awesome what we get to do. Um, and as far as Bioware, as far as Mass Effect, I mean, it's just an amazing game right. to be a part of. I mean, the technology around that game was developing as that game was happening. Mm-hmm. So we started out like kind of like basically how all video games were made mm-hmm. where you just it's like not in order and you just right. like, have all these different endings and you don't and you're totally by yourself in the booth and you don't have any reference other than what the director is saying like as far as like proximity to the other person you're talking to mm-hmm. or those sorts of things so like you know you might have a scene where one person's shouting and then the other person's like talking like this so it makes no sense you know what I mean? because because if you didn't record it together and it was recorded you know eight months before this part and right. little, you know it's just like that's how games were mm. but Bioware they were um, like cutting edge with their technology because yeah. they came up with the software and the way of recording mm-hmm. and everything was um, done at uh, why am I going to space on. Um, for, oh God, no, it's not Formosa. The, I'll, I'll think of it. I'll think of it. I'll think go. of it in this Technicolor. There you Everybody's go. done it Technicolor, and um, and so it was like the same engineers and everything. So they really like honed in on how to do it. And mm. so by the second game, the game, the acting, I think, really improved because technically, I would see like with Jennifer Hale, mm-hmm. who is Fem Shep, the lead, which. Which is the point? Is like yeah. yeah, you could have the lead of this whole game be a female, right? And right. It was just like cutting edge, and you could switch, and their love interest could be you know same sex or whatever. It was just amazing. That's awesome. You know, and it wasn't being done before. And right. It just gave people the freedom to be who they are and and express themselves they want, and people you know 
they express themselves through these characters, you know? And so it's it was just, it gave people that freedom, and I think people fell in love, just mm-hmm. in love with this game. And so the experience was amazing, and I still get to do, you know, N7 Day, mm-hmm. number seven. Yeah. There's always a panel or something like that. <laughs> right. I still so much love all these years later, and I'm hopefully, and then they, you know, remastered it and released it back in 20. 20- yeah, in 2021. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so um, it's just the love continues, and I love love. So. For sure. That's right. <laughs> well, I, hope gotta... that there's, I hope there's more games, and they can call me. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and it's just got to be an amazing feeling to know that you're a part of something that is, like, ingrained into society now, right? Because, yeah. I mean, Mass Effect and Bioware, that they are ingrained into society now. Totally. Even if you're not a gamer, you have heard of them. You know what they are. Um, that's got to be an amazing feeling. Um, it is. It really so is. I want to get a little deep for a minute um, just because, you know, as of late, the last couple of years or so, right, we've seen a lot of recasting, if, uh, if you will, um, to have a, a a black woman voice a black woman as opposed mm-hmm. to a white woman and different things like yeah. that. Talk about that a little bit. Coming from that standpoint, what has that been like for you in your career? Have you had those things when you first started out to be like you you didn't get a role or you did get a role and nobody cares? And how much has that switched now for you in the industry? I don't feel like I lost out any roles that were specifically for black women to mm-hmm. women that weren't black. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like I have that uh, had that experience. But I, what I have noticed is um, there's way more work roles for me mm. to audition for. Mm-hmm. There's way more representation. There you go. And it's awesome. And not just for people of color, but just, you know, gender identity and um, just whatever. You know what I mean? Like, the, just whatever, yeah. people, whatever people want to... Um, to, to talk about and what, what people are going through. Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel like that part has been amazing because, you know, I'm just like working on, especially in animation. It's just like, for sure. It's just, it's just really cool. In fact, I now am a, a cast member of the Simpsons because there something you go. like this. Yeah. There's a character named Lewis. Yeah. If you guys look up Lewis, he's a f- friend. He's only been on a, f- like, He's like in the background. He's one of those um, friends that's always with Bart and his. Right. You know. Right. Yeah. And um, he was voiced by another actor who works on the show. Um, her name actually is Trust McNeil. She works. She's like mm-hmm. she. She does every character. Female <laughs> Basically, character. yeah. <laughs> Freaking amazing. Um, so, but sh- I guess you know, in an effort to just not having people um, appropriating right, <laughs> yeah. right cultures and you know and all of that stuff, um, which is amazing. Uh, and I think it's important that that was something that happened for me. So now I get to, to voice that character. Well, there you go. Um, on The Simpsons. Um, but also because, you know, I I work for Fox, too, and I do a lot of stuff. So I, it's, I feel like I earned it. Like I got right. to oh, it. Oh, without doubt. Point. Without, without but, doubt. But it was a cool... It was just like a gift, a beautiful gift. And, yeah. and the reason I bring it up is because it tried to bring it full circle to what you were talking about earlier. I think so many people just... They don't understand that it's not just in front of the camera. Everything Mm -hmm. that you see happening or all of the discussions or all the topics of of the way the industry is shifting isn't just in front but also behind. So all of the actors and the hard workers and the performers such as yourself are going through all of that the same way the people that you see every day are going through that. So I'm glad to hear you say that and that it is that transition and that you have seen seen success and those major changes in voice work as well because good. That should be that It's like opportunities, yeah. Yeah, we just it's 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 wonderful. Absolutely. It's, just, yeah. it's so good. It's so good. We and are that. Something that new that I've been wanting to because we took a little a little off season, obviously with the holidays <laughs> and uh, yes. like both of us are recovering from COVID and just a whole oh, bunch wow. of things. Oh yeah. Yeah, we feel much okay? better now. Oh yeah, yeah much we, better now. <laughs> we feel so great. We literally felt like we were dying there for I a while. I mean, yeah. <laughs> we How feel... scary. Did you guys have it at the same time? We did. The yeah. whole the whole household had it. Yeah. So oh. like it was just crazy. And here double vaxxed, boosted, everything wear the mask everywhere we're supposed to wear. It. 
didn't it matter. It just happened. It just Everyone's happened. Exactly. exactly. It's so, oh man, I'm so glad you guys are feeling better. <laughs> Thank what? you. Great. We appreciate it. We appreciate so it. So scary. But something that I've been reflecting on and trying to think more about to get to know our guests a little bit more is to ask, what is your main goal? for your career like what do you want the ending outcome to be what do you want your legacy to be basically wow yeah Yeah. that is very deep i I try (laughs) i try um hmm. right i'm sorry to put you on the spot (laughs) no it's not it's just a great question and i think what i want is at the end of the day is Mm -hmm. to just have enjoyed my experiences mm-hmm. and my and the journey mm-hmm. of it and that's what it is cuz it's a it's a fun journey and it's also i don't know it's magical and i feel like it keeps me young and i feel like um i'm like i just get to play like i don't know maybe someone who gets to play baseball for a living right it's kind of like it's like you did that as a kid and it was fun like i feel like i did this as a kid and it was fun and now i just get to do it all the, all time. the time, yeah, yeah, and that's what I was talking to my son about, and other young people is like, don't worry about what people are saying or that it's difficult or you can't do this or everyone has that thing inside of them that's that it's like a dream or mm-hmm. something that you want. You have to listen to that and mm-hmm. you have to follow it because everyone's is unique and it's there for a reason. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I was lucky because I was able to hear that voice inside of myself and. So I think at the end of the day, I just want to have followed, listen to what I wanted to do, trust it, go with it and enjoy what I do. And then also making people happy. You know, I I meet so many people that just whatever, like I work on this show called um, Steven Universe, Mm -hmm. yeah, which is just um, like one, it's so close to my heart. Mm -hmm. It's such a beloved show and and the fandom's incredible. And I've met so many people like cosplayers and just people that really identify with the characters and what the, and what Rebecca Sugar was trying to say with the show. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's, I've had so many stories that like bring tears to my eyes or that just melt my heart. And, I just want more of that because that's what life's that's the good stuff in life. You know, right, there's right. too much there's too much hard stuff. That's right. So being a part of like the good stuff that people love, like you saying me being a part of your childhood and Yeah. I just want I just want to do more of that. If so. something that's just a simple thing that you do can yeah. change somebody's life, what a feeling that is, right? Yeah. What a feeling that is. They can and be it, having the yeah. worst day of their life and they see you or they hear you and then everything is okay. And that's an amazing thing to be able to do for people without doubt, yeah. without doubt. And I'm the same way. I mean, how many I get, I have to turn on like something if I'm not doing, you know, feeling great or if I'm kind of down or something right. like I need something or some one lots of times to help me like mm-hmm. get out of that place and it's usually in the form of entertainment right. whether it's because that's the escape that's what entertainment that's is supposed to be right exactly. we like you said there's so much hard stuff in reality already we don't need that we need the good right. stuff and so let's right. escape to some good let's stuff get the good and so, stuff exactly and, and i'm so grateful like i said like for like podcasts like this mm-hmm. and for just the internet in general that i now know that what i do af- like affects people yeah. yes and before I didn't know that, you know, it was like more of like as like kind of a selfish thing. It's like I just want to be an actor and I want to do my right, thing. But now right. when you're realizing like, you know, you can communicate with people and That's right. move people or it's just wonderful. It, so it really is. It's a special yeah. thing. It, it is. really is. It's awesome. It it's definitely. Awesome. And something else that we've been focusing a lot on with like we were talking about earlier on the show at the beginning, um, with the industry being full of rejection and you say you get rejected every single day. How do you keep your mental health sane? Because you seem like a very happy, bubbly person. You have the key (laughs) to the happiness. So I just want to know how you keep your mental health good. I feel really blessed that I get to do because I I just, just, I'm happy because I'm doing what I love doing. I just, I just found out that I'm doing, um, I'm actually having my first session tomorrow that I'm going to be one of the announcers for the Beijing Olympics. For yeah, yes, like, yes. Badass. I'm Super so cool. excited. I'm so excited. Yeah, so tomorrow's my first session, even though it's at 7.30 in the morning. That's okay. Oof. I'm fine with that. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, but, 
Yeah, I would say, wait, part of your question was, what was... Just keeping your mental health sane. Keeping the mental health, that was it. Thank yeah. you, mental health. Yeah. Um, <laughs> forgetfulness is great because... <laughs> exactly, you know, just rejection. forget about all the rejection. Yeah, that's like, I, yeah, live in the moment. Um, for sure, let it go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you audition, I do this all the time because I, today I had like, Seven auditions. Seven auditions. Mm-hmm. Meaning, meaning, and since COVID, I do everything from here. Right. I record myself. I have I'm my own engineer, my own director, my own everything, and I get on my own nerves. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, so uh, my auditions are just like so hard for me. I can and imagine. So, yeah. Just, I need another ear. Like, I need someone going, yeah, oh, that's funny. Or, like, you know, or that's not. Or this character, no. Right. Like, today, one of my auditions was to be a utility player on a popular show. Mm. So, a female utility player is someone who would come in and do, like, three or four characters. Right. Mm-hmm. On that episode. And they have to be distinct and different and stuff like that. So right. You, and when it's an audition, you want to show that, oh, wow, I can, I'm going to do this character and that. And char- so, but it's, like, draining and exhausting. I can imagine, yeah. Yeah, just not not having that. But um, sorry, mental health. We're getting back to that. You're good. So, <laughs> you're good. I love it. <laughs> I um, do my work. Mm-hmm. I work. I make my choices. And then I just let it go. Mm, yeah. Because you don't, like, every once in a while there'll be something like, oh, I really want this. I really want this. Right. And I'll be thinking about it. But 99% of the things, I do it. I do my best. I imagine myself already, like, I'm in the session. Mm-hmm. It's not an audition. It's like, this is how I would do it if I had the session. Right. Like, if I'm, if I'm, and I just kind of do it like that with confidence, mm-hmm. and then I let it go. So lots of times when my agent calls me to tell me that I have a booking, I don't remember it. I do, I have to go back and listen to the audition, or, you know, it'll be like, oh, that sounds vaguely familiar. Right. Okay. Right. You know, it's kind of <laughs> like that. So, but that helps me. Yeah. Because, like I said, dealing with the rejection. And it's not really rejection. That's not the right word. It's yeah. just it's just not yours. Yeah, you know what right. I mean? It's okay. Like, And when you get a job, because when you get a job, you're not going, you're not questioning it and asking, right, all the, like, right. why I'm not, why didn't I? You're just like, it's, you just do, it's just, you have to have the same attitude when you don't that as you do when you get the job. That's it's right. It's just like, it's just not mine, but this one, this one is. And this, you know what I mean? So... That's, that's great. That's, kind yeah. of, that's mean, my mental health for a shortcut to <laughs> actors to not take it personally and to just persevere oh, for and sure. keep going. Well, and it's yeah. great advice too because, you know, like you said, rejection is not the – it's the word you always hear. But it isn't the right word because yeah, it's not the you right probably word. knocked it out of the park and nailed it. It just wasn't what they were looking yeah. for that yeah. day. We had a previous guest, Tony Winters, who compared it to like luxury cars. He's like, yeah. I'm still a luxury car, but I'm a BMW and they were looking for a Porsche that day. Yeah, they wanted like, the Porsche. Yeah, it, it doesn't mean you didn't do a fantastic job. Right. And half the time when you don't hear back too, we've had guests tell us – they nailed it, and the casting director would tell them months later they would hire them for something else. And it's like, because yeah. of that audition you did six months ago, we knew yeah. right away, just wasn't that role. But we were right. waiting for you. So, you know, you got to look I've, at it that way. I have been lucky enough to have people tell me that. Because sometimes they don't, you don't know. It, it did happen, but you don't necessarily right. know. <laughs> right. And I've had people go, oh, I'm so, I'm so excited to finally get to work with you. I, you know, this, that, or the other. And, right. You know, there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen making That's decisions. That's absolutely and, right. You know, and so it, it happens. And it's even happened where I've re- been replaced on something. And, you know, it's hard not to take it personally, but it's like it just it just didn't fit for them or it just right. didn't, you know, whatever. So and it's fine. Exactly. And, it's, and you just go on. And you exactly. Just go on. The show must go on. The, the show, show must go, go on. on. I love it. Yes, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Listen, you, this has been absolutely amazing. Oh, we, absolutely. like, can't thank you enough for this. Like, thank I you. feel like the up-and-comers – trying to break into it are really going to enjoy this and like i mean they could really just take down some notes i mean mean, you have so much and it's always a blast to have people like yourself on because you know we pride ourselves on having like literally everything in the entertainment industry right writers producers directors voice actors actors like different things because 
we have somebody that works with us that wants to be a voice actor, right? There's always somebody out there that wants to be something that somebody yes. is. And so we feel yeah. like the more opportunity we get to put guests on that are those people, that are the people doing that. In fact, I mean, it's just wonderful for us. It's wonderful for them. It's wonderful for you. And it's just... It's wonderful for yeah, me. We, yeah. <laughs> we because I, rem- I mean, I remember when I wanted to be. Right. You know, yeah. this, and it's like, of course. And then here I am. So, ah, just and, awesome. and the next person, you're, you know what, they're, they're coming up and it's wonderful. And <sighs> there's room for everybody's dreams. There's room for everyone. Exactly. To do I love what that. they love to do. That's, that's a, right. that's a t-shirt. Yeah. There's that's right. room for everybody's <laughs> dreams. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. There really is. There I love really it. is. I love it's it. Like, well, listen, thank you so much. Like I said, we really appreciate it. And where can everybody follow you? Cause you know, it's all about social media now. <laughs> oh God. And I'm so bad about that. I actually have my friend's daughter helping me post things. Oh, there, there you go. go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am on. I'm. Oh gosh, I should look. Let look. <laughs> Let's just double you. check real so quick. On on. Oh yes. Yeah, so Kimberly Brooks eleven on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. And then Kimberly D Brooks. I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. On Twitter. <laughs> there you on go. Twitter. There like, you go. He's like, who knows my middle name? Kimberly it's very thing, but you have the same profile <laughs> picture on both. So that makes it much easier. Like when people are oh, trying yes. to find you, it's like, oh, okay, that's the right one. Oh, it's like, it's her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like... <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because it's it. like, I have a very common name. There's a lot of Kim Brooks out there. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but you can find me. Just, you know. Oh, we'll make sure. We'll we'll make sure everybody goes your way. So yeah, just wow, yeah. what a gem you are! That I just the Aww. smile is so infectious. We just it can't really help is. but smile when we <laughs> and we get to see Thank the smile. You. So there you go. <laughs> I know it's awesome. Thank exactly. you so so much. This was really really fun. Of course, oh, of course. Open invite anytime you ever want to come back on. We have an industry news segment where we talk about entertainment news. We have a top oh. five where like sometimes it's top five animated movies. That's this right. Time, well, it's, oh, wow. Yeah, like there's just so many different things that we could have you back on and of course another guest segment to promote things that I'm you're sure. doing like we said we're always down because like hex girl reunion yeah right um, <laughs> <Hex> girl reunion. <laughs> get the hex oh, girls yeah. all on that'd be awesome that'd be uh, we should do it. that we, we should, should definitely totally do that. do that let's make <laughs> oh, that happen my, oh, my gosh emily will be like right here she'll yeah. be like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> exactly That's oh so well, you guys also i found out recently that i'm nominated for an annie award oh, oh okay or for best actor for actually for Bumblebee. That's nice. yes. So, yes. Congratulations. Yes. Yes. It's coming up. So I don't know how it all works, but right. <coughs> well, excuse me. I was best really of excited luck. to hear I, that. I Thank totally you. think you should win because I ah, love Bumblebee thanks. and yeah. I you do a great job. Bumblebee playing. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Well we'll see. We'll see. But I'm just it's just cool to be not it really is just cool to be nominated. We'll start the like, campaign what? right now. Don't worry. Exactly. Exactly. I don't even know who votes. I don't right? know. We'll find out. We'll we'll make sure. Yeah, we'll do our research. That's right. We have people. Yes, get the people on it. I love it. I love it. Well, listen, <laughs> take care. Guys. Have a good night. And good Thanks luck so tomorrow with your first taping and all that good stuff. Oh, yes. I'm really excited. I'm I can't excited. wait to listen to you because we'll be watching for sure. Oh, yeah. You'll hear me on the Beijing Olympics. Very yeah. nice. <laughs> that was an exclusive right there. Right, exclusive. That was it right here. I love it. I love it. Well, listen, Thanks, take guys. care and have a great night. Yep. You too. Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh man, that smile just like lit up the room. She like through the zoom, it lit up the room. Through the zoom, <laughs> she's so fun. She is like absolutely amazing. Yeah, like I can't thank Delana enough for even recommending her because I mean, like she is somebody who you want to have around. Yeah. She's got that knowledge. She's got that the personality of like someone who can encourage you, like how far to go, and like has so much advice on what to do in the entertainment industry. And the perfect mix of confidence mm-hmm. and humility. Yes. Because you have to be cocky and confident, but you also have to be humble and thankful. Facts. And, and she was the perfect mix of that. Agreed, oh my goodness. man. So good. So good. Thank you again, Kimberly Brooks, for coming on the show. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, she was great. <laughs> <laughs>